Hey everyone, it's Connor here from Durham Hearing Specialists. I hope you're doing well. And welcome back to a very unusual case, very, very complex case. Um, this patient has several things wrong and we're gonna go through it step by step. I very rarely get worried about patients, but I am worried in this case because you know most of the time if there's an ear infection or some kind of pathology, it very rarely translates into anything nasty, anything systemic. Um, but I am worried about this chap. Now this chap has a mastoid cavity, which is basically where a surgeon has gone in and drilled away this part of the skull internally. So this part of the skull is called the temporal bone. Typically you can think of it as where men start to go gray, their hair starts to go gray. And the portion of the temporal bone that surrounds the ear structures, we tend to call the mastoid bone. So I think it looks the inside of a crumpet. It looks very similar to the kind of inside of a crumpet because it has lots of air pockets inside of it. Um, and this little fragment here that I'm suctioning, so that you have to imagine that the ear canal is not a lovely kind of tubular structure. It's just a huge cavity on the inside. And this little fragment here that, I've, that I'm sort of trying to remove, this is what we call a sequestrum or a bony sequestrum or the plural of that would be sequestra. But what this is, is a piece of bone that has died or necrotized and flaked off into the cavity. And you may be thinking, well, that doesn't really, are you sure that's bone? It doesn't really look like bone. It's definitely bone. Um, and the reason that we know that is, first of all, just the, the way it felt in my hand as I was kind of tapping it and so on it, it you know it was very very hard like kind of a, a spoon on brick kind of feeling in my wrist but also we ran some lab tests on it so uh, what we did if you're interested in the detail I, in part two I'll upload some of the microscopy videos this is what it looks like under a compound microscope but the gist of it is is that we took this little fragment and immersed it in potassium hydroxide for 48 hours occasionally kind of swilling it around and um if, it, if that was just dead skin, it would have dissolved very, very quickly in the potassium hydroxide. But um, it, th this little fragment was quite happy in there after two days. If anything, it looked cleaner and whiter. So um, it's, it's definitely bone. And um, that is a worrying sign. Also, th these kind of yellow fragments here, very, very hard, very distinctive feeling that I'm getting in my wrist. This is not just dead skin. It's not normal stuff that you would suction out of an ear. So there's bone that is necrotizing and flaking off into the cavity. So you, I, I suppose you could con consider that to be a diagnosis of osteomyelitis or evidence of osteomyelitis, um, which implies that there's been chronic infection in this mastoid cavity, which has caused the bone to lose its blood supply and then for the bone to die and then flake off, as I said, in, in the form of sequestra. Um, but the, the, the cavity is still infected. There's still infection in there because of this thing here. So if I tilt the endoscope right up, sort of towards the ceiling, you see that little red splodge right there? It looks like a cherry or a raspberry surrounded by white stuff, which is pus. That also should not be there. So that looks to me, again, it's very, very difficult to get a good look at it. it it's almost impossible to get close. Again, I'm tilting the endoscope right up towards the ceiling. So I'm looking up inside this cavity and that looks to me like granulation tissue which again is a sign of chronic infection it's a sign of trauma or chronic infection or damage basically so granulation tissue is you, you tend to think of it as as um, there's also some fungal overgrowth here all these little white splodges you tend to think of granulation tissue in connection with wounds or burns or ulcers so if you imagine if you you know, you fell off your motorcycle, you, you, would, you would have the ulcer which would be filled with this pink stuff granulation tissue. So what, you know, what you have to imagine here is that, you know, all this stuff is drilled away where the arrows are, normal mastoid bone, okay? And so this is a kind of, the procedure would have been a, a wall down, a radical wall down mastoidectomy, which would get rid of the posterior wall and the superior wall of the ear canal, creating a cavity. And the granulation tissue is kind of up inside the cavity. So it's kind of there, I think, roughly. So we'll, we'll get up an, another diagram because this isn't showing the brain there. So this is a, a slightly better diagram. 
and hopefully you can see from the diagram that actually there's not much space, there's not much distance between the middle ear and the brain. So, and in fact the roof of the middle ear, which we call the tegmental wall or tegment tympani, there isn't that much bone there separating the roof of, you know, separating those two spaces. And that's why cholesteatomas are so dangerous because the cholesteatoma can then erode the tegment tympani and then you're into the brain. So you can get meningitis or a brain abscess, something like that. So, you know, it, it, I, I'm fairly, to some degree, worried about this patient and I've rushed him through to ENT. Um, just as a side point, there's this little kind of pocket here which I'm examining. And um, if you ever want to know what being heavy handed looks like during a suction procedure, this is a very good example. So this is what not to do. Um, my colleague was looking over my shoulder at the time and we were sort of remarking, you know, look at this pocket, you know, I wonder if there's, it's filled with keratin. Um, and you can see here I'm kind of scraping away and scraping away, but this will cause bleeding. So not, nothing major, but um, you know, this kind of rubbing and abrasion with the Zolna probe is, is, is not really that good technique. See that right there? So in any case, this, this granulation tissue that's right up inside the cavity, um, I was very worried about. Now, the problem is that I'm not an expert in mastoid cavities. I don't do these mastoid operations. That's the, within the realms of an ENT surgeon. So although it's abnormal, I'm not entirely sure how, if I'm justified in rushing them through to an urgent, you know, urgent care. Um, what we really need is an ENT doctor to come in here. We need Vic Veer, basically. That's what I'm kind of angling for. We need Vic Veer to come in and tell us, A, am I correct? Is that granulation tissue and is that sequestra? And B, why is it there? Pr presumably due to chronic uh, otitis externa. Um, and three, what's going to happen to this chap? What is, e what is ENT going to do with this chap? You know, does the, does the, all the sort of necrotized dead bone need to be kind of drilled away? Um, how is the infection going to be treated? What's the kind of prognosis for this chap? So Vic, if you're watching, I would really appreciate it if you gave us your opinion on this case. Feel free to steal this video, edit it, re-upload it, talk over it, whatever you want to do. But um, we need answers. We need answers. Um, there's the granulation tissue again. And, you know, I would, I would love to get close to it. I would never dream of suctioning it because it'll bleed profusely, probably. But uh, I would love to get up close to it. But the, simply the endoscope is not that long. It's not long enough to get right up there. So uh, this, this section here that I'm suctioning, um, at the time, as I, as I mentioned previously, Lils is looking over my shoulder. And we were kind of hypothesizing at this point that this is the eardrum that's been left intact. And in the end, we, we identified that this is the drum. We got the patient to do a valsalva maneuver. And the patient was able to blow air up his eustachian tube and kind of deflect this eardrum. And you'll see that in just a moment. So, um, interestingly, this kind of pink ridge on the left side that I've occasionally kind of touched and prodded, this is what's left of the ear canal wall or the back part of the wall, the posterior canal wall. And uh, so I'm just going to get nice and close to this eardrum here. You can see I'm kind of gesturing with the Zollner probe there, and that's, that's me pointing something out to Lils. Um, so because this case is, is so weird and interesting, um, we were kind of constantly talking during the procedure and sort of figuring out what landmarks we could identify. So if you just watch here, watch this grey tissue very, very closely and you'll see it deflect in just a moment. So right about now I'm asking the patient to clamp his nose and I'm asking him to blow through his nose. Yeah, did you see that? Very, very subtle. It didn't really flex like you would normally expect an eardrum to flex, but that's a sign that that's what the that anatomy is. Um, so yeah, m myself and Lily, we were sort of discussing the case and looking at things. And as a general point, personally, I find cleaning mastoid cavities extremely, extremely difficult um, because everything that you know about anatomy is essentially obliterated. You know, there's, it, it, it's not normal and therefore you're kind of suctioning in a space where you don't quite know where the perimeters of the cavity are. You know, unless you've seen the patient before or you have a CT scan to look at, it's very difficult to know where to poke and prod and therefore you have to tread very, very lightly. 
But there we go. So there is some necrotizing dead bone or sequestra flaking off into the cavity. There's some granulation tissue right up in there. Um, very, very interesting case. Uh, now, if I hear back from ENT, which I probably may not, um, then I'll update you on the case. But I would really appreciate it if, Vic, you uh, gave us your thoughts on the case because it is so weird and interesting. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments section below and I will try my very best to get back to you. And of course, I will see you guys in part two, where we'll look at this fragment of mastoid bone underneath a compound microscope. See you later.